Hello everybody and welcome into today's video. Today I'm very excited because we're doing something kind of new on the channel and we are doing a house tour of the palace house from the premium shop. If you've been following along the channel, you'll know that a week or two ago, I posted a full valley tour of every biome fully decorated, the product of a year and 950 or more hours of gameplay. But I've also been working recently on decorating the interior of all of my premium shop houses. That's currently my goal for before the next update to have all of the interiors decorated. So this could potentially become a bit of a series on the channel where once a premium shop house is done, I can take you all on a tour to show you what I've done with it and how I interpreted the interior decorating for it. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, definitely like the video to let me know, subscribe for more Disney Dreamlight Valley content, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any time I upload new videos or when I go live, play Dreamlight Valley or a variety of different games. Without further ado, let's take a look at this palace house. So I have the palace in the Forest of Valor. If you saw my full valley tour, nothing has changed with the exterior of this house. I wanted to keep all of the palaces in the Forest of Valor. I wanted to keep a mostly natural approach for the majority of the biome. And then closer to the buildings, we get a little bit more elaborate, a little bit more ornate, um, but still keeping a very natural feel. So I kept this leaf strewn pathway in this courtyard area. I used lots of flowers, lots of decorative bushes, but also these blueberry bushes because I love the blue color against the palace. I used a lot of items from the celestial set that we get from leveling up our characters. So these pillars, these lights, these counters or tables and the fireplaces. I never really use these items to be honest, but I think they look absolutely stunning against the palace. I also used lots of golds, particularly from the Beauty and the Beast collection, which I think has the best gold items that we have in the game. And we couldn't forget to include Fairy Godmother's pumpkin carriage, so of course we have that. Going around the side of this courtyard, I have another one of these fireplaces. This leads back to this mining node and a little side patio where I have this Mickey fountain. And then to the other side of this courtyard, we have a little pathway that leads back to this clock tower section with these arches with the lanterns, some more of those celestial lights, and a few of the fairy godmother benches. I use these a lot in the courtyard area as well. I adore these benches. I feel like we need more items like this in game that put off a sparkle effect around them because it's just so magical. I definitely wanted the clock tower to have a special moment in this build because this palace definitely reminds me of the Cinderella castle, so having a clock tower just felt like it was it was necessary. So let's move on inside of the castle. This first room I have is sort of an entry lounge sitting area. Throughout the majority of this house, I used a lot of items from the Cinderella collection. I used a lot of blues and golds, and I did use some oranges um, in terms of accenting with the pumpkins to sort of pay respect to Fairy Godmother and her influence on the Cinderella movie. So I have one of my house chests here. I like having mannequins in the houses that have outfits that sort of fit the vibe. And of course, another clock moment. Definitely couldn't miss out on that opportunity. Over here, we have a piano, a harp, a little sitting area. I love these windows, these gothic rose and gothic wheel windows. I can't remember which one this is, but they're so elegant. I also put some of the bellflower vines up on the wall. This fireplace is one of my favorite objects in game. I was so happy when I finally got it. So this had to make an appearance in this room with these light blue Cinderella couches and chairs. And I also like to have a memory frame in every room. This one, I have Cinderella and the prince dancing. And then in this corner, we have just another little lounge seat. This is part of the Cinderella collection. It's supposed to be the same light blue color as this couch and this chair, but in the most recent update, it was changed to a dark blue. 
I think that's a bit of a bug and hopefully it gets fixed soon because the dark blue is not as much of a vibe as the light blue in my opinion. And then of course I have this princess shelf which is another one of my favorite items in game. I love the representation of all of the Disney princesses. It's so detailed and so beautiful and I knew I needed to have it in this house. So that is our main room. We can also see kind of blocking the doorway a little bit in that view. I have another one of these blue arches with these lanterns. I thought that was nice to frame the doorway. Next up, we have our sewing room slash dressing room. This was one of the first rooms I think I decorated in any of the premium shop houses. I knew I really wanted to make a sewing room from the Cinderella collection items that we have. These painted wardrobes, the fabric shelves, the thread spool seats, everything just screams sewing room. So I made a sitting area here by the fabric shelf. So if people are waiting to have their dresses fitted or they're watching people try on outfits, they can sit and relax. I have a couple tables, the sewing table and a different table that I just put on the sewing machine. Lots of books that I imagine have patterns or references for different clothing. I have a lot of mannequins, as many as possible, in this room. These are styled after Disney princesses as much as possible. All of the mannequins in this room, I've made touch of magic dresses for the princesses that they're supposed to represent. But touch of magic items tend to get broken if you put them on mannequins. So I just substituted the dresses with the closest equivalent that I could find in game. And I still think it's a nice vibe for now. I love these windows with the blue curtains. They're so fun. And then back here, I have a painting table stashed so that if I'm ever in the forest and need to quickly pop in and craft something to decorate, I can just come into this room and do it. The next room that we have in the palace is the bedroom. I wanted to keep this one a little bit less cluttered, more open, more clean and elegant. I think I mostly accomplished that. I am typically a fan of very cluttered decorating, as you probably can tell if you saw my full valley tour, but I wanted to keep this one looking more elegant, more refined. So I again brought in this arch with the lanterns, this Cinderella bed. I placed some tables behind it to kind of bump it out a little bit and give us a place that we could put some decorations. I tried to bring in some floral elements. We have the globe. Again, this lounge that I really wish was a light blue, but we're just rocking with the dark blue for now until it gets fixed. I used this celestial door because I felt like it really fit the vibe of all of the golds that we had going on in the room. Another repeat of this princess divider shelf. Another harp and then just a nice table here with a few blue items on it. When I'm decorating in premium shop houses, I often like to use similar or the same items throughout the various rooms to kind of help keep a more cohesive look to the whole build. Like it's not really four separate rooms that just happen to be in the same place, but it's one building that's decorated with a similar style. So that's why you'll see a lot of the same Cinderella items. We have a couple of these divider shelves to kind of help the house flow a little bit more. And then this is our last room in the palace. This is our library. One thing about me, I absolutely love a library. I have one in pretty much every premium shop house <laughs> that I have. It's one of the first things that I usually decorate in every premium shop house. And it's been an adventure trying to create diverse looking libraries 
and not have any two look exactly the same, so that's been a lot of fun on stream, experimenting with that. This mannequin is supposed to represent Belle in her blue dress, which we also see in this picture above the mantle. I was so happy when we got these blue bookshelves and especially this window seat from Belle's quest line, and I immediately knew that I wanted to make a library with these items. And this house seemed perfect for it. The blue, the pink, the gold, it just fits absolutely brilliantly. We have a table here, tons of books strewn around. I feel like this represents my house where there are just too many books to fit on the shelves, so you kind of stack them <laughs> haphazardly in any way that works. We also have another fireplace here because the only thing better than curling up on a couch with a book is doing so in front of a fireplace. I think this is one of my favorite libraries that I've created. I'm very happy with the way that it turned out, and it was the most recent addition to this palace house. I also used these floating candles. These were from the Villain Star Path last year, but I really thought they added a nice enchanted magical feel to this room. So that is our library. And that is the full tour of our palace house in Disney Dreamlight Valley in the Forest of Valor. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have the palace house, let me know where you placed it in your valley and what you did decorating on the inside because I would love to know. If you'd like, you can also join our community Discord server that's linked in the description box. There's a channel where you can share pictures of your valley and how you decorated and I would love to see how you interpreted this palace house. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, a big thank you to our channel members. I appreciate your additional support so much. It's so kind and generous and helps me out so much. And to Kitty and Prib, our Gilded Lily Tear channel members. You two are amazing and I appreciate all of the additional support, everything you do for me and the community. It means the world to me. So thank you very much. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you real soon.